Let's take a look at how you'd plot surfaces in three-dimensional space using Maple. So let's we want, say we want to plot these two surfaces. The surface x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared, or the surface x squared minus 4y squared equals 4 plus z. So as usual, the thing to start off with is with plots, since that's our starting uh, program for getting three-dimensional plots in Maple. Now the basic syntax for a plot like this is implicit plot 3D. And all you need to do in implicit plot 3D is give Maple the equation x squared plus 4 times y squared plus z squared equals 4. And then a viewing window. So the, the usual format is again x equals, say, the lower end, so from minus 5 to 5. Uh, then a y window from minus 5 to 5, and a z window from minus 5 to 5. And that's the very, very basics required. Now when you run this command, Maple will come up with its first initial plot. And usually its first plot will be pretty choppy. So one of the things that we can do with these initial plots is we can do some things to help us see it better. As usual, you can include axes so that you can kind of see how the graph is oriented in three-dimensional space. And in this case, it actually labels them, so I don't need to do the label command. But it is choppy. So one of the things that you can do to make it less choppy is, now that I see what the picture is, I could zoom in a little bit more. It doesn't seem like it goes much farther than two in any of my directions. So if I were to zoom in, I might see a better resolution on the graph. And that's a slight improvement right here. It looks kind of like a pill, a little medicine pill in three-dimensional space. Another option I can do is an option called grid. And essentially grid tells you how many, tells Maple how many subdivisions to make in each direction for its plot. So a grid along the lines of 30, 30, 30 will sometimes give you a much better resolution than your initial one does. And it doesn't take Maple too long to plot it. The downside of this grid though is you have lots and lots of these auxiliary lines to help you see what's going on. But you can go up to this option right here and change some of those features. For example, if you turn on this bar right here, you just see the shape color coded without all the drawing lines, and that gives you kind of an idea of what its shape is. A nice in-between is the very, very last option, which will color code it, but it will only show the lines parallel to the XY plane, what we would call level sets for a graph. And so that's what this guy looks like. And that's the basic syntax for doing something like this. If you actually want the output to have simply be plotted like this first, you can add the command style equals patch contours. Oops, sorry, patch contour. I always get that wrong. And there you go. Now the plot will come out looking just like we had it before. So let's try the second example. So the surface is, let me just clean off my space and start again. The second example was x squared minus 4 times y squared is equal to 4 plus z. And again, I'll give it a viewing window. My default is usually minus 5 to 5, not because that's particularly smart, but because it gives me a starting point to work with. And so my first plot would be that, which is a little bit hinky right there. Let's add some details to it. So let me put the axis on. Axis equal normal, so I can see where about I am. And it looks like interesting stuff is actually happening much lower on the z-axis. So I'm going to bring that z-axis down maybe to minus 15. There we go. Now I'm seeing some interesting features here. So the next couple things I'm going to do is to clean it up a little bit better. Let me go and put a higher grid of points. So 30, 30, 30 is a good start. And let's see, that smooths it up very, very nicely. I have a shape of a saddle, what we were calling a uh, parabolic hyperboloid or a hyperbolic paraboloid or yeah, let's just call it a saddle or a Pringles chip. Um, let's also go and put style equals patch contour, so I can see it with a little less visual clutter. And that's what this surface looks like. And so there's the very, very basics of this. One last feature I guess I should point out is that when you do these, Maple will always plot these pictures in what would appear to be a perfect cube, but that means it's going to warp the axes around. So remember that you can always click the one-to-one -one button to see really what the surface looks like. And in fact, it's a lot steeper than my first graph would have led me to believe. And that just is, again, helpful information to let you see what the graph really, really looks like in three-dimensional spaces.